book of Job, if you turn there with me. Job chapter 1, verse 3. And I don't have my glasses. Well, let's start at verse 1. I'm sorry, verse 1, Brother Kevin. I'm sorry. Let's give our sound booth a hand. They do an awesome job. So there was a man in the land of us whose name was Job. I know it looks like Job, so don't get afraid. And that man was perfect. That means mature and upright and one that feared God and shrewd evil. In other words, he kept himself from evil. And there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. And the substance also was 7,000 sheep and 3,000 camels and 500 yoke of oxen and 500 she donkeys and a very great household so that this man was the greatest of all men of the East. Job chapter 42, verse 10. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Verse 11. Then came there unto him all his brethren and all his sisters, and all they had been of the acquaintance before, and did eat bread with him in his house. And they bemoaned him and comforted him over all the evil that the Lord had brought upon him. Every man also gave him a piece of money. And everyone an earring of gold, verse 12. So the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning. In the beginning he had 7,000 sheep, now he has 14. In the beginning he had 3,000 camels, now he has 6. In the beginning he had 500 yokes of oxen, and now he has 1,000. In the beginning he had 1,000, he had, a thousand, he had a 500 donkeys, and now... He has a thousand. I want to talk to you that on this subject, I'm more blessed now than before the devil messed with me. I'm more blessed. Are y'all gonna let me preach to you today? You may be seated. Most of us are familiar with the story of Job. Even those who have very little biblical knowledge have heard of this Eastern patriarch, this character Job. Some say that Job is a mystical character and not a real man, that the book of Job is all made up. Uh, some say that Job was the whole story is just an allegory, sort of an illustrative myth, if you will. Nevertheless, I choose to believe that the canonizing word of the Lord as we have it would not be uh, mixed with myth and fairy tales, but that every word of the Lord is true today. Now, just because there's no... Um, archaeological digs to prove that the man Job really lived, it's not that important to me. The, the importance is that I believe the word of the Lord to be true. Yes. Yes. And we, we know that Job was an upright man and that he lived for God. And so then his whole world seemingly in a moment went crazy on him. As such as times could be. And I, I want you to understand that just because we live for God does not mean we're not going to have to endure some things. As a matter of fact, you become a target of the enemy. And although the word said, the translator said, and the, the, the whole rhetoric of the scripture and the design of the drama said that, that Job endured evil from the Lord, that's not quite true. The evil came from his enemy. Now the Lord saw him through it. The Lord even instigated the whole situation. But he allowed the devil to attack Job. I want you to know that we're not wrestling with flesh and blood today. But we're principalities and powers and rulers of darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in high places. 
And I was thinking the other night and I started thinking, man, this has been a rough year. I guess I'm the only one going through. Brother Haggard, I was laying in my bed and I'm thinking like, man, this has been a year of hell. I, I, was, I was just talking to God. I said, God, this has been, whoo. I said, this has been a bad year. I'm talking personally, pers- just personally. I know it's been rough for some of you. And it's been rough for me. It's been rough for my wife. Like, personally, this has been a rough year. I kept on going on about how rough it was and how rough it was. And the Lord interrupted me. He said, well, what was so rough about it? I started telling him what was rough. And he said, well, where are you now? And I began to look at where the rough times brought me. Come on, Pastor. Y'all not going to help me by my preaching now. <laughs> And I began to say, where would I have been if not for the things that I've encountered this year? I had to step back and look at myself. Oh, I'm going to just preach to myself. I had to step back and, and take inventory. I know some of us have gone through, several families have uh, had to suffer the loss of their houses. And I was careful to say houses and not homes. You see, a house is brick and mortar, but a home is the people I love. You may have lost stucco, but you still got your wife, you still got your children. I'm still blessed. And I said, Lord, we, we, we were lost soldiers. We've lost. Yes. Thought about us. I thought about Sister Tricia's mom. I said, we lost a soldier. Right. Yeah. I thought about Amos. I said, we, we've lost soldiers. Yes. He said, yeah, you've lost soldiers on the field, but you haven't lost the battle yet. Yes. And I said that the folks have suffered, God, and they're, and, they're, and they're still being battered against it. Things are still happening. And I'm praying and I'm trying to get sense. He says, you've got to understand, son, that what I'm putting you through, it's getting you where I want you to be. And so as I begin to look... And as I begin to take inventory and go and just mentally go through the year, tears begin to flow in my eyes because not because it was so bad. It's because in my heart welled up gratefulness. I, I know that doesn't make sense. Because when I thought about not the material things that I have suffered the loss of, but the spiritual things that I have gained. Some of us have lost some stuff, but you gained more Jesus. Oh, you're not hearing what I'm saying. Some of us have lost stuff, but we are closer to God today than we were one year ago. I come to tell you, I'm more blessed now. When the devil started messing, and I got news for the devil, my blessing ain't over yet. I, I want you to understand that, that that sometimes things happen to get us back, to bring us back into the proper perspective of what this thing is really all about. Oh, come on and help me now. And sometimes we, we have to be shaken and we have to realize what's really important in our life. Oh, I wish I had an amen corner. Sometimes we have to wake up and realize all I really got are the things that are closest to me. Amen. If I, if I lose everything, I don't want to lose my wife. I don't want to lose my children. Are y'all going to help me preach anytime? I can always get another job. I can always get another house. I can always get another car. But I can't get what God puts down on the inside. So I'm thankful today. That in the midst of hell, God steps in my life with a little bit of heaven and says, I'm still going to lift you. I feel like shouting if you ain't. 
Uh, the devil tried his best, but we're still here. He's put obstacles in my way, and we've overcome them. We've been through the valley, and yet we've come out on the other side. We've climbed up the rough side of the mountain, and yet here we stand. We've been to the fire like Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego, but we didn't get burned. God not going to help me, but it's all right. He put us in a famine, but we didn't starve. He dried up the water, but we still got water to drink. We got Y'all not going to help me preach, but I'm going to preach anyhow. Some of you are suffering so uh, uh, financial loss, but you're still eating and you're still cold and you're still driving around. I don't care if you got a putt, putt, or a hoopty. You ain't walking. Yeah. Hello? You still got your health? You reasonably in your right mind? You got something that you ought to be thankful for. God has not done me wrong. God has been good to me. And when I look back and when I think of what he's brought me through, it's a mighty long way that God has brought me. And today I'm back. You ought to lift your voice and throw your hands and say, thank you, Jesus. Because I made it over anyhow. We are not exempt from the perils of life. We're not exempt from the things that happen in the human community. God will not always shelter you and I. He will not always divert the enemy from you. He will not always extrapolate you out of your situation but he will never leave you alone Job's dilemma rings with some of us today because it's been one of those years when it seems like everything what's that Murphy's Law everything that could go wrong went wrong <laughs> And some stuff that was that could have went right didn't go right. That went wrong too. Anybody know what I'm talking about? And it seems like that that instead of gaining ground in some areas that we've lost, but I'm trying to I'm trying to look around and see the loss. But cause what I've gained in relationship with God is greater than the small material things that I have thought the loss was all about. I want to ask you a question today and I want you to be real honest with yourself. Do you feel like you're any closer to God now than you were last year at this time? I do. One thing old, what year is this? Eight. One thing old eight has done is kept me on my knees. <laughs> All right, just act like I'm talking to somebody else and not you. I said one thing the year 08 has done is kept me on my knees. It has kept me saying, where are you, God? I need, I, I, you know what? And now the, now it's like when I'm, I'm, I'm doing it all the time now. And God has said, I had to bring you back here, son. Because you were forgetting what this thing was really all about. It's not about how big your house is. It's how big your God is. It's not about how many things you possess. It's about your relationship with God. God is bringing us back to that old time religion where Jesus is the best thing that it really ever happened to me. It is not about my job. It is not about my bank account. It is about the king of glory and his love and his power and his mercy. And I don't know about you, but I'm glad today to be a recipient of the mercies of God today. We all lost different things. Not everybody lost the same thing. 
But we can feel, I don't know about you, I can feel the momentum of the Spirit. I can feel God moving in areas and ways that as we look back that he has brought us closer to him. Now his means are sometimes, the, the way he does it, the, the direction he takes us and the path that we have to walk and the, and the road we have to trod and the direction that we have to go are not always pleasant to us. Huh? I've always thought why when Peter was trying to protect Jesus and pulled out his sword, he looks at Peter and said, get thee behind me, Satan. For thou savest the things that be of man and not the things that be of God. And when Judas comes and kisses him, he says, friend. I thought, like, wait, wait a minute. Okay, God, what are you trying to say? How, how, how can Peter be your enemy and Judas be your friend? He said, Peter was trying to protect me from Calvary. Judas was leading me to Calvary. I know you don't get it. Anything that gets you back to the cross is not your enemy, but it is your friend. Anything that gets you back to where Jesus... Oh, that's not going to help me preach, but I'm going to preach today. Anything that helps you get back to the old rugged cross and gets you back to Christ and puts you on your face and gets you on your knees and open your eyes so you can see what's real and what's valuable, that is not your enemy. That is your friend. I don't want to embarrass somebody so I'm not calling their names, but I see people in here lost two houses. But they're sitting there with a smile on their face. Babies all in their hand. Closer to God than they've ever been. I had one lady call me and said, Pastor, I'm so happy. I said, really? She said, yeah, I lost everything. She said, but what I have gained... Oh, you're not hearing what I'm saying. We've got families lost two homes, but they're happy. They're smiling. You know why? Because they got reconnected with the real thing in their life. I had one of my little RN girls, one of my babies, said, Pastor, you preached that Bible study on letting Jesus shine through you. She said, I went to work. And one lady goes, what's that glow on your face? She said, that's called H.G. Let me tell you something, folks. If you don't think God's doing things, you're absolutely wrong. God's doing great things. You've got to get your perception right. Whatever you've been through this year, it is not a setback, but it is a set up. Because when God gets through, our latter end is going to be greater than our former. And what God is going to give us in return is going to be greater than anything that we've lost in the journey. He said, Pastor, what do I need to do? You just need to learn how to be thankful. I'll help you. Here we go. I'm about ready to start a Bible study in the first of the year. Because I hate to tell you this. But in the year 2009, I will have a heart attack. God spoke to me. And it is going to kill me. I expected that reaction. Now, now the problem with that is that you're going to have to have the heart attack too. I love it when you like that. I told Brother Solis, I said, Brother Solis, I hate to tell you this, but I'm going to have a heart attack. He goes, you are? I goes, yeah. He said, you know what? I said, mm-hmm. As a matter of fact, I'm planning on it. He said, what are you doing? Eating a lot of pork? <laughs> no, I'm going to have a heart attack. Humility. Earnest prayer. Anointed worship, repentance, and thanksgiving. Heart. And I'm going to use those five things to attack the devil. 
All I want to know, do anybody want to have a heart attack with me? Because what's going to put us on the next level, we got to have to be humble, earnest prayer, anointed praise and worship. We're going to have to repent, renew, revive ourselves. And we're going to have to put all this murmuring and complaining and throw our hands in the air. And we're going to have to be grateful and be thankful. I wonder if anybody want to diagnose themselves in, in 2009. I'm going to have a heart attack. Where I am today is greater than where I was last year at this time. And where you are today, spiritually, I'm talking about spiritually. I know you lost some material stuff. I know it. I mean, come on. Oh, nine. Financially. Economically, socially, may indeed be a little worse than 08. I don't know. Enjoy the low gas prices. For they're like Lord Jesus Christ, they will rise again. <laughs> yeah. We'll rise again. So enjoy them. But don't waste your life trying to hold on to material things. Rather, rather, let go of what you have to let go of so that you might gain Christ. release what you need to release turn your back on what you need to turn your back on walk away from what you need to walk away from that you might gain God that you might have more of Jesus Christ because friend that's the only thing that's going to make a difference in our life there's some of you just teeter tottering on the edge just to, and you know what to do can I, can I just give you a Why don't you just surrender? And say, God, all I've got could be... Well, we've seen it. I mean, a little glimpse. All we have can be gone overnight. That there, there is nothing secure in this world. And there are no guarantees in our society. Everything that we've worked for, everything that we have, can be gone in a moment's time. The only thing we will have is our family and our God. I want you to stand. I want you to stand right now. I want you to close your eyes for a moment. And I want you to think of the thing that's most important in your life. And if, you're, if, you're, if, if you have any God in you at all, I guarantee you that when you think of what's most important to you, your house didn't come in your brain, your job didn't come in your thoughts, your car, no. The people that are gathered around you. If your, child, if your child is in your arm, if your spouse is by your side, if your children are in the house of God today, that would be the thing that pops into your head. I'm thankful, God, that of everything that I've lost, you left my family intact. Of the things that have drifted through my hands without my control, I still retain my integrity with God today. 
from that point, we are more blessed today. Though we've suffered some types of losses. I wonder if we can just lift our hands right where we are. Come on, can, can you lift your hands right there? Are you grateful today? Or are you still crying about what you thought you lost? Can you realize that God has actually taken care of you all year long? I can, I can start pointing out people that God has healed your body. I can start pointing you out to some of you who are on the edge and you didn't even think you'd be here this time of year, but God rescued you right in time. I can look around this auditorium and you need to look around. You're standing next to your sister. You're standing next to your, your cousin. You're standing next to somebody that you didn't think would ever come to God or come back to God. But they're here today. I, I, I present to you, has God been better than you than you've given him credit for? Her hand and said, I don't know about you, but I'm grateful today. Come on, let's give him a wave off. Lord, I'm grateful for the things that you. Have done. Yes, I'm and I'm grateful for the victory you won. I could go on and on. I could go on and on and on. I could go on and on and on about your word. Because I'm grateful. Lift those hands. Come on. Why don't you bring your family down? Why don't you get your children around you? Come on, get come on, mom. Grab your family. Get your children around you. Lad, come on, come on. I'm grateful for the things that you have done. Come on, bring your sister with you. Bring your brother with you. Bring your children with you. We're not gonna we're not gonna cry about what we lost, but we're gonna rejoice at what we have. I could
Oh, you ought to lift your hands and begin to just worship him right now. Come on, come on.
Strong now shaking 